Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over the Colt 6721. This one here has the Magpul furniture that I've added to it. Uh, as you see it now throughout the video, you've seen it uh, as it came though. It comes plain Jane AR. Uh, it comes just with the Emba sight. The rest of this Magpul stuff doesn't come on it. But what we're going to do today is just a whole bunch of shooting with this rifle. really like this rifle with the uh, lightweight barrel here. And uh, we will uh, report back what we find and go over some of the details along the way. Time to test the accuracy of this rifle. Obviously we have a pencil barrel and it is in one in seven twists here. It's not free floated, so I certainly am not expecting match groups. I suppose we'll find out here in a little bit though. But first up, we're gonna be using a 55 grain Freedom Munitions ammunition, just to remanufacture stuff that they sell. Um, not again, not, my, not match ammo, not at all. After that, we'll shoot some 62 grain M855, 5.56 chambering. Uh, after that, we'll shoot some uh, 55 grain Wolf steel case steel jacket, and then we'll follow it up with some Hornady uh, 75 grain steel match, uh, bolt tail hollow point steel match ammunition, which generally actually shoots really well and is, is reasonably affordable. Um, you can probably tell looking at the grass around me, we got about a five, five mile an hour full value wind going on, so uh, who knows what that'll do. I should be able to uh, deal with it, <laughs> but uh, anyway. Enough yapping. Let's check it out and see what actually happens when it hits the paper. It's not a bad looking group. First two are pretty tight as you saw. Uh, let's get that 62 grain 855 in here. Not too shabby, shooting high. Higher, I should say, likely due to the pressures we're shooting at there. 55 grain wolf. Opened up there as you'd expect with that ammo. And lastly, 75 grain hotel hall point tap from Hornet. I can see that through the scope. That's nuts. I'm going to shoot a couple more. Try to verify this. There's no way. Still pretty damn good. 
Let's go check them out. Pretty happy with these groups overall. Honestly, I was expecting some three inch groups uh, at least, just being the nature of the actual gun not being free floated. Let's check them out. Our Freedom Munitions group coming right at uh, right at one and three quarter inches, so pretty good. Obviously, at that point, the barrel was cold this as well. Right there, we're just a touch under two and a half inches. I believe this one was the wolf. And we're just a touch over two and a half inches. And this thing, as you guys saw, I shot a five shot instead of three shot group because I saw some crazy stuff going on there. Right at one and one quarter inches. Five shot group with a pencil barrel, one and seven twist, not free floated. I mean, I'll take that. I'll take that every day, all day. Getting into the details of the gun, we'll start with one of the most distinguishing features, and I guess up front, you see that you do have a pencil profile barrel. So that's really what differentiates it mostly from other guns in Colt's lineup. It's the lightest one they make. I believe the weight on this one comes in at uh, 6.12 pounds for the rifle uh, as it comes out of the factory. We have our A2 birdcage flash hider up front. Moving back down, you'll notice that it is marked uh, one in seven twist, and it is a 5.56 chambering, so you can use either 5.56 or 2.23 chambered rounds in there, and it is uh, MP tested as you would expect. Uh, moving back, the front sight, you can't see it so well here with this handguard on there, but this one is not a F marked front sight. Um, that for some reason seems to be a big deal on the internet and in practice it's absolutely not an issue because they actually use a little bit longer uh, front sight post so that way you have your same uh, sight height as you would on any other AR style weapon. Uh, it is a carbine length gas system um, so a 16 inch barrel with a carbine length gas system uh, when you combine that with the full auto profile of the bolt carrier group as well as the H buffer um, really it doesn't uh, change the characteristics of the rifle too much. Both the upper and lower receiver are made out of 7075 uh, T6 aluminum. And you can see here it does have the Colt mark next to the forging mark on the upper. The uh, upper also has T marks to indicate where you're at in terms of positioning on the 1913 style rail. And it does come with the embus rear sight. Nothing too special going on here on the lower, like I mentioned earlier, 7075 aluminum. It is uh, mil spec as mil spec can be. One thing that folks kind of like to check out is the A4 marking. I know that's changed over the years, at least from what I've read on the internet it has, but this one I believe is a 2013 production gun and still has that marking on there. Um, the Magpul trigger guard is not factory. I did put that on there as well as the SL grip and the rest of the accessories. Uh, it does come with just a plain Jane straight trigger uh, trigger bar there underneath the trigger. Moving back, you'll see that the uh, extension and the castle nut is properly staked. The extension itself, I should say, uh, is a four position extension. So that differs from some of the other arrows out there on the market, which offer six position. Doesn't really matter, practically speaking. Absolutely not, it doesn't. <laughs> the charging handle is just your standard mil spec charging handle. Absolutely nothing fancy there at all. The bolt itself is gonna be HPT and MPI tested. And if you take a look at it, Real close on pretty much every Colt bolt I've ever seen, actually, there's, you're either going to see a C or a MPC, because they don't call it MPI, they say MP Colt, instead of uh, MPI like every other company does. Uh, the carrier itself is going to be a full auto profile. You can take a look there and see the staking is done extremely well there on the gas keys, and it is chrome line for added reliability. The trigger components are pretty standard fare. Regular old mil spec breaks right around five pounds, pretty cleanly, I might add, actually. Uh, definitely a little bit better than some of the other factory offerings out there, at least in this sample. The chamber is chrome lined, as is the barrel, and you can see there it does have the M4 feed ramps. I think I covered most of the important specs about the rifle, but it really comes down to preference, in my opinion, if you're choosing between different Colt models. Now, the lightweight, the advantage of that is that it's going to be somewhat handier, obviously lighter if you're carrying it for long periods of time. However, the disadvantage of that is that you're going to have more um, dispersion as your barrel heats up uh, in terms of accuracy. 
Now, as you saw here, if you're shooting relatively slow, just for accuracy, like say a hunting situation or something like that, you're probably not gonna notice much of a difference at all. This rifle shot extremely well when we were shooting those groups, so I'm not gonna complain about that at all. Um, but some folks will want that extra weight for sustained fire. Um, really a personal preference at that point, it's up to you, but Colt makes good rifles. It's just what they do. They're not the prettiest. Somebody said once that uh, Colt doesn't make show ponies. They make war horses. I tend to agree to that. Um, they're not always the prettiest. The finish isn't always as nice as some of the higher end, like BCM and Daniel Defense rifles, but they do tend to work pretty well. This one here has been 100% reliable. Cannot complain about that at all. So I suppose that's really one of the most important metrics. And when you add some components like we have here with these Magpul accessories, um, it really becomes a rifle that can do a lot. Of different missions. If you guys have any questions about this rifle or anything else that we talk about here on the channel, you can always post below in the comments section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always, but thanks for watching guys. Thanks for subscribing and I hope to see you in the next video.